everyone. Welcome to another episode of Always Open Quarantine Edition. Hey. Pew, 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 pew. I'm your host, your Barbara Dunkelman, and today I'm joined by... Uh, we don't know which one. Is my <laughs> to your left? Yeah. I'm below you're... you on my screen. Yeah, okay. we're all in different yeah. orders. This is fun. Who do we got down there? Uh, Nick Scarpino. That's who I've got. That's that. That's, that's who I think you were motioning to, right? Yeah. Hi, Nick. Yeah, excellent. Okay. Hi. How you doing? Good. How are you? I, I'm great. Good. Who else we got? <laughs> we got Tim Gettys from Kind of Funny making our return. The Tim and Nick experience joining Barbara Dunkelman, joining Mariel. I love this. Let's do it. I'm so oh, excited. Oh, man. And it's me, and I'm here in my house, <laughs> not in a yellow chair as I, I wish I could be, but uh, I'm here. I'm back. This is my first episode of this season uh, because Thank I've you. been in quarantine much longer than everyone else. Yeah. tell. I don't know if you guys know what happened with Mariel, but she has been like out of the studio for over a month at this point. Whoa, what? Yeah. What happened? Yeah. So um, nothing happened. No, luckily I am, I have not been infected. Um, my girlfriend was traveling like right before all of this hit. So just out of super precaution, um, we decided I would stay home for, you know, the, to quarantine for two weeks. And then in the middle of that is when the citywide quarantine hit. So mm-hmm. this is my lifestyle, man. I got, I wake up, Maybe I put on pants. Maybe, maybe. I don't. <laughs> maybe. maybe I uh, Solid. shower. Maybe I don't. You know. Love that life. So I showered. I showered for you guys today. Oh, thank you. I smell good. One, yeah, it's one of those things where you know having a wife is obviously amazing uh, to live with, but she's also an interesting reminder of when you put the pants on for the second week in a row, and she looks down and goes, "Maybe we wash those tomorrow." <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Trevor oh, looks okay. at me and says the same thing. So you're are you actually putting on real pants or are you just putting on like sweats? No, these are sweatpants. These are this this is my ensemble right here with those are nice sweatpants. Slippy slips. I just (laughs) Oh business from like the waist up and then just leisure from the waist down. That's the best part is you only have to worry about what you look like chest up. Everything else doesn't matter. Not at all. Um I was looking at our first episode we did together. And I think if the date was right, it was almost three years ago. Whoa. Was it really? Shit. That is insane. Also, happy birthday to Rooster Teeth. Day of yeah. recording. I don't know if we can break the illusion here. We can. Seven we can. Years. That's over half my life. That's the, the craziest thing to think about, man. Was it so were they 17 years old? Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Almost almost uh, legal to vote. There you go. <laughs> or make porn put, or watch to, porn. I had to put vote on that just so people Watch know porn. Do you have to be 18 to watch porn? Absolutely. Not my household. I mean, <laughs> no, but also, like, I think every site is like, oh, if you're over 18. Uh, I guess you're right. Yeah. I found that out the hard way because when uh, we first had access to the internet, uh, we were all, like, just Googling our names. And one of my best friends, Danny, went to Danny.com, expecting it to be, like, I don't know, some cool stuff. And uh, it was. It really was. <laughs> but it wasn't the cool stuff we expected. Hold on. I'm going there right now. What was it? Da- with a wine? <laughs> Danny.com. It's so or funny. Or even, like, the, the beverage websites. So, like, you'll go to, like, Svedka or whatever.com, and it's like, you must be 21 year up to enter. Oh, yeah. 21 year up. <laughs> Okay. Somebody got the URL for hottopic.com back in the day. Like this was when like Hot Topic was really blowing up in the malls in like 2003 or whatever. And they had it forward to some porn site and it became this huge thing. Eventually Hot Topic got it back. But for a while, online shopping, very difficult, very distracting, I would say. Or uh, a lot more fun Both. for, for Both. some people. Hey, yeah. same, amount of, I... same amount of weird belts and chains though. Fun fact, every time Kind of Funny makes a trip to the mall, we always go into a Hot Topic. How could you Always. not? You have to just to guys, see, just to see what the kids are wearing. I'm mostly the, um, Rooster Teeth stuff. Cheapen Hunter merch. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh yeah, they always have you guys' stuff in there. It is, it is very weird to go into, and I think like we have some stuff in Target and Walmart too now, especially for mm-hmm. Ruby. It's so yeah. weird going into those stores and seeing that stuff there. That's you. I know. Well, kind you should of, stand next to the shirt and just like tell people this is me. And they're gonna be like, all right. <laughs> and they're like, okay. <laughs> I know the people that make this show. I'm in the show. <laughs> okay, we're calling the cops now. That's cool. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what though. The weirdest thing has been so like in in this city, obviously, um, people are finding weird places to group and get social interactions, and Target has become the hot spot. Like I went to a Target 
the other day and I'm like, peep, there's way too many people in here and everyone's talking to each other and this is just a bad thing. Like there was a couple following us because we were my wife and I were trying to get a puzzle out of puzzles completely. Puzzles were the first thing to go. <laughs> it, went, it was toilet paper toilet first, paper, then puzzles. puzzles. <laughs> and I was like, what are we going to do? We ended up buying categories. And as we were Hell buying yeah. it, I was like, categories? My was like, categories. And I hear someone behind us go, we should get categories. And I look back, <laughs> and it's a couple that looks exactly like us. And they're like, <laughs> six feet away. <laughs> yeah, they're literally, but like, they were kind of following us because they were like, these people clearly have a plan of what they like. We, we go to Target with an intention. Absolutely. Well, okay, let me back up. There's two types of Target trips. There's the, we have to get stuff done. It's a Saturday. And then there's the, it's a Friday night. Do you want to just go hang out at Target? That's what I do. I do that sometimes. My goal in life is to manage a Target later in life. doesn't matter. Um, I did not know you, this was, your love for Target. I love Target. Target all day, as they say. <laughs> they do do say they that. say that, Tim? They do. I, what are you doing with your shirt? I hate <laughs> everything about this right now. You're just the worst. <laughs> I kind of like this look. This is Kanye. Me. Oh, Kanye. damn, people working out, oh, girl? That, that, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I got off track. I was talking about Target. Oh my God, though, today um, we went outside. First off, I got, I owed my wife like a huge apology because I went out, I just totally sniffed at her because she was like moving some some uh, hangers that were on the street. And I was like, don't put those there. Someone's going to fall down. And then they're going to add more to the coronavirus. Someone's going to have a bloody nose. And then she was like, okay, you got to, you got to take a time out. You got to go away. I was like, cool. Let's just go get a cup of coffee. I'll chill out. I'm sorry. I apologize to her. As we're standing in line, this, the guy in front of us was like, do you guys mind taking a step back? You're like, you're like within six feet. And I, and I was like, sure, I don't mind that. And then a second later, like the perfect comedic beat later, this crazy person starts screaming, six feet, six feet, people. It's for your own safety. And like screaming at people on the sidewalk. Oh and I'm like, how badly do I want this Pete's coffee right now? Like, <laughs> oh, it was for Pete's too? It was for out. Pete's. Yeah, Not even the Bucks? No, the the Bucks, the Bucks you can't order. The Bucks is doing only mobile ordering. So, Tim, you'll be very happy to know this, that for the first time as a Starbucks fanatic, as a person who has been wildly addicted to Starbucks my entire life, I finally got the app. The I'm proud app. of you, man. Welcome to four years ago, but I'm proud of you. How did you not my friend. have that before as someone who goes, because I know you go to Starbucks all the time. year old man. He's intimidated by the technology. <laughs> okay, there's, there's two things I don't like about this app. Okay, Barb, let me just tell you. One, you have to put $25 on the app every single That's time. True. So you're basically loaning them $25 every single time you want to buy a $3 coffee. Okay. okay that fair I enough. can get away from. Because 25 bucks for me, Tim knows, is like, that's a <laughs> two and a half. Yeah, max. <laughs> The, only, the the real talk though is the Starbucks that I go to because the city's it's difficult to park here. Well, not now because there's nothing about parking. <laughs> um, but but when times are not in the apocalyptic time uh, period, usually it's really hard. So the one I go to is like a Starbucks that's inside of a um, shopping like a supermarket, and they don't take the app, so it doesn't matter. I just I just go there and I just you know order. It's really quick anyway. But if it's like a normal like a real deal Starbucks, then yeah, now I'm gonna start using this app because. I just I don't I don't like people, but I do like the option to interact with people, which mm. is the hardest thing about this quarantine. You want to tell people your rules, your time. Yeah. yeah, like my wife and I have decided that we want the option to um, talk to people, but we definitely don't want to exercise that option. We've learned that. <laughs> We've learned that. But we want the option. We so don't have the option like right now. Good and bad things about what's going on right now for you. The, yeah, the good thing is for me is that I mean it's definitely focused me, and I think on, on a positive note, like work wise, it's made us all have to be really creative and figure out how to get these streaming setups going. So like my brain is constantly active, which is leading me during the day to a tremendous amount of productivity. But at night, I cannot shut the brain off, oh. and I have not been able to go to bed before one thirty in the morning like this entire time. Yeah. Dude, uh, I'm the same, other, and I've been so yeah. tired. I don't know about you yeah. guys. I've just been totally. exhausted. It's yeah. just because you're constantly thinking about what, it, how much longer is this going to be? And like today was, today was one of the reasons why I kind of had a little bit of like a, a conniption fit with my wife because I was like, "Fuck, another month of this." And it's not even that I'm, the, I'm worried that she, that I'm going to drive her nuts for another month, and it's going to like ruin our marriage. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like she's stuck. <laughs> she's stuck in here with me. Imagine that. Tim. Oh, God, Imagine another horrible. month. Just me and you. And I'm like, Tim, what are you doing? I want to be a part of it. And then the second you let me be a part of it, I do this the whole time. That's great. Who would be the person you would least want to be stuck in this quarantine with? Kevin. Nick, three, two, one. Kevin. 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 Yeah. (laughs) Why Kevin? Our partner. Oh, he is. So many reasons. 
Yeah, it's everything is uh, exclamation point. It's all caps at all times. The mm. smell is all caps. The oh. taste, there's this taste associated to it. The air it's just, taste. it's, it's, it's like a lot. A it's a lot of love though. It's, it's a like lot of love. Him? Well. It's just you. T- like he's a smell amplifier. Yeah, so father. like if there's a smell, you're like, is that broccoli? He'll get. He'll come into the room and it'll smell ten times more like broccoli. We don't know why. It's science that has not been explored fully yet. Um, <laughs> but what I like to say about Kevin is Kevin is 110% all the time. And when you need 110%, it's awesome. But when you want everyone in the room to just have like a 20% energy level, Mm-mm. it's not awesome Which anymore. Most of the time. <laughs> most of the what time. About, I mean, what about you, Barb? <laughs> hmm. Man, I don't know. I'm trying to think of like the people we work with who I wouldn't. Oh, I know. Someone from <laughs> our office. <laughs> Absolutely. Chris Damaris. I was <laughs> so I was gonna say Chris. Oh, Chris. The good thing about he Chris was... though is that he like he knows when to like go do stuff by himself and be quiet, <laughs> like a baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> give me give me some top level reasons on on why you'd be worried about Chris. Oh, I think he would be entertaining for like ten minutes, and then it would just be like, just. I think I could deal with it. I think if Blaine and Chris were locked in a room. They would For kill each other. Quarantine, Blaine would last maybe 23 hours and like 58 minutes. <laughs> they can't even spend the, the day in an office together working on yeah. something without driving each other crazy. No. Is it because they're too similar or because they're too polar opposite? I don't, I think like. Column A and B. I think they're different in terms of energy levels, maybe. And size, like arm size for sure. Oh, yeah. You know mm. that causes problems. That's yeah. for sure. That's for sure. Because there's only so much room. I mean, you got maybe you don't know this, but me and Tim encounter this all the time. There's only so much uh, room in a room for arms. You mm-hmm. only have like out of the room 100. percent If your arms take up 90 percent of it, it doesn't leave enough room for everyone else's arms. Not fair. It's so an it's an blame. important issue. Unfair guy. I don't know how you guys yeah. deal with that. I'm so sorry. Well, we don't work out, so all of our arms are very small. <laughs> but I'm saying when Blaine enters a room and he looks like Henry Cavill from freaking Man of Steel, it's like, dude, put it away. We don't need it today. Okay. You should you should see it now. Uh, Blaine is now dating uh, my trainer Kelly. Oh Jesus Christ! Who, who we love. <laughs> she, she's wonderful and like beautiful and so fit. And them together, it's like workout Barbie and Ken. Oh my That's, god! That's you know they're it. just ramping each other up too, right? There's got to be some level oh, of absolutely. like a little bit of a competition. Good. Who can, who can be the more shredded? Oh, is she she's gonna and win. she wins. She wins. And she win. Oh, she wins. He, he's pretty cut, but. I don't know. She's she's also pretty <laughs> cut, and she like I love it. She's awesome. She, is she she's on the gram? So. Okay, she is Kelly G Fit. Okay. Kelly, G, Kelly fit. G Fit. Shout out! No, I'm looking this up. I got to do it. I'm sorry. There we go. Please do. It's <laughs> research. Right it is research. research. It's for the podcast. It is funny with her as a trainer because she'll be showing me an exercise, and I'll get distracted because she's so beautiful. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you need to show me that again. <laughs> I, I can't even sit here pretending like this whole household didn't already like internet stalk all of this and <laughs> literally have like a 20 minute like oh breakdown God. of the entire feed. The oh, yeah. first picture is them and like they're pretty much both shirtless. I mean, she's in like, you know, the sports bra, but like they're both. It's so much muscle. And it's I don't so know. Much it. See, like them in a room. That's it. No one else can be in that room. No, I can't stand next to these people. We'll forget about it. Because you know why? Here's the thing. I'm going to think I look like them until some Ooh. asshole takes a picture of me and tweets it. And I go, whoa, what's with the two <laughs> gods and fucking Jabba the Hutt standing next to them? I don't understand. <laughs> it's like they got all of the good genes and the rest that was left over. Like, we're missing some, but just make Nick. Let's just make Nick. We need someone to, like, move the furniture oh, around. Oh, posh. You guys are Pish beautiful. Posh. You guys are beautiful. In your you. own We're right. all beautiful. Thank you. We're all beautiful. Look at Tim, though. Look at Tim with this shirt and this hair combo. That's a new shirt. Hair. Pretty stuck at it. Looks good. Looks good. Com slash what are you guys oh. going to do about haircuts? So that is the question. <laughs> uh, yesterday, we recorded an episode of the Kind of Funny podcast where Greg was the first one to have to deal with this. Jen cut his hair live on stream. And it went from him being like, we're going to do this and it's going to be awesome to like the yeah. moment we started recording. Me, Andy, and Nick are like, this is a terrible idea, and we totally scared him. But by the end of it, he looked great. Yeah. Yeah. 
Greg is very impulsive, and that is mo- normally like nine out of ten times that works in his uh, benefit to his benefit. But like this one was the time where I knew he was like, I'm like, this is a bad idea. So I'm me and Tim and Andy. I think we just collectively were like, let's make him as scared as humanly possible about this. <laughs> so we started talking about all. The- I was like, Jen, have you seen? Do you know how to cut a guy's hair? And she goes, oh, I watched a YouTube video. I'm like, great, let's go right into this. Let's just Nothing- see what happens. Because, you know, I think that maybe, I don't know how closely you pay attention to men's haircuts, but I was mystified the first time I saw my wife get a haircut. I was like, I don't understand how much math and science is going into this. There's layering. They do this thing when they do, you know what I mean? Much more and complicated it's like, than women's hair. Like, there's this. And I'm like, I don't understand what's going on there. And so like, but to but but on the flip side of that, you got to get that fade right or else you just you look do. dumb. Well, that's what I, I think about with you guys. Like, I feel like, Meryl, you and I are probably okay for a while. Because we just have- Oh, yeah. I get, the last time I cut my hair, I got my hair cut, uh, I called my hairdresser. And she's actually, so my ex has the same hairdresser. I actually met my hairdresser through her. And the last time I had seen her uh, was July. And so I got a haircut, like, last month. And she was like, I thought, like, because of the breakup, you just weren't coming back. And I was like, no, oh, I just get my hair cut. This option, yeah. Oh, well, really? it's just easy when you just have long, sh- right? Normal Both hair. of your hairs look fantastic. Well, right. You both look great. I did this my is... hair for the first time in two weeks today. There's I didn't some glow bother. going on, and I'm 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 here for it. Thank and do you. you both do you both wash your own hair, or do you do do you go to blowouts every once in a while? Oh no, I, no. I only do yeah, never blowouts. So the only time okay. I go to a hairdresser is to get my color done or to get it mm. cut. Okay. So my 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 wife for a while was like you know once every couple of weeks would go do it. like they they'd wash it and she'd blow it out she they, she just likes it it's like a fun thing, and she's like I have to wash my own hair now, I'm like yeah, yeah you're gonna have to do that, it's a such, weird thing such but a first I, world she, problem. <laughs> so, yeah, no. She also keeps worrying about something called roots, and I don't know why that's a problem. It's a store in se. Canada. Um, and yeah. Okay. There you go. They Wait, is cool she blonde? Hair. Yeah. No, she's a, she's a brunette, but um, oh, she was just joking around. She was joking around with all her friends and family about like now everyone's going to see what each other really the looks truth. like. Right. Yeah. The truth. See, for me, I just want to shave my head, but I just I haven't gotten to that point yet. If it goes another month, I might do something like that. But I have a feeling like in a month, I can do another month. Um, yeah. and just put a hat on or something like that and then go in but so I, I was do talking miss to, the, uh... to trevor about it because he like you guys kind of has like a, a tight yeah. like a buzz side and then longer tight, on the top tight. he's got the barber cut yeah yeah and so i was like i could probably buzz a little bit for you if you mm-hmm. want it and he's like honestly i might just see what it looks like different the and thing, long yeah the, the first time think about when you have good hair like trevor has great hair tim has a good hair good hairline too is that when it grows out it can it has the potential of just looking awesome you know like oscar isaac looks amazing when his hair grows out he's got great hair we, i keep coming back to him maybe i got a complex but um <laughs> oh i keep bringing that up but like for me i i have seen myself with hair like that tim i think there was someone tweeted out a picture recently of me and like the old guys i look terrible when my hair gets longer so We'll see. Let's find out. How, do How often do you guys get yeah. haircuts? Because don't guys get haircuts like every two a, weeks? A lot. Like- I mean, this thing is if you're like, if you're trying to look good, every two weeks is the answer. But yeah. like, if you're, I, th- there's a lot of times I'll go a month. But if I'm like, if, I, I would have cut my hair to be on Always Open, but now I can't. Uh, you know what I mean? It's like one of those situations. Yeah. Because like right now, it. my sides are really long. Like, you I can't usually tell like, though. They look good. Yeah, they, 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 it looks okay. Right? I'm feeling the feeling the volume right now. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying, Tim. If you let yours grow out, I think you'll just, just it'll just grow out. It won't look buzzed anymore, but you'll have that length on the side. You'll look like Don Draper. It'll look great. I'll take it. Oh Definitely. shit. I'll take it. There you go. Whew. Like I would like on real talk, if my hair, if I had more confidence in my hair, I would let it grow out because I am tired of having the stain cut that every single person in San Francisco has. Um, but I just, there's only so much you can do with thinning hair where you get to the point where like, you got to keep it short. Otherwise, you just look like you're doing a bad comb over. I, I'm i just getting so nervous about this going on for a certain amount of time and me wanting to cut my own hair or do Uh-oh. bangs or just something don't. like that. Because Give I, us a call when you get to that moment and, uh, and we'll make sure we, we walk you back from that. Resist. Yeah, just watch all the TikToks of people doing it and it'll make you stop. Yeah, exactly. Do you guys watch TikToks? Oh, God bless TikTok. Yes, of course. Look Tim does. Tim shows me the ones that I have to watch. Yeah. <laughs> He's my TikTok I finally, filter. I finally broke down and uh, and actually I still don't have an account. I still don't have a, the TikTok account, but I have the app and I've been doing the scrolling. Uh, I was trying not to do it. I was trying just to stay away from it. 
and find other ways to keep myself entertained. But like, you know, two weeks in, I'm just like, fuck it. Last night, I watched McDonald's themed TikToks for four hours. Sure. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's pro maneuver. That's, that's the it, problem with great. TikTok is like once you get into it, you'll spend three, four hours a day just watching. That's them. why they named it that. The clock. Because the time goes, goes by. Oh wow. God. You just blew my mind. Totally made that up. Totally why are they calling it, it up? But that I makes sense it. though. So <laughs> crazy thing. Uh, TikTok is, it used to be called Musical.ly. Yeah, mm. a couple right. years ago. And I remember when that was first starting, I was all up on that uh, to make these stupid music videos. And then Bernie started following me and was like, "Like, what is this? D is this something we need to get into? And I was like, absolutely not. And then here we are. I was so wrong. I was absolutely wrong. It's I've never yeah, felt but that was so old being on an app before. Oh, God. So, I mean, but that's the thing is like, it's now transcended where it's, it, it was the Snapchat of a couple years ago, right? Like where we're all like, oh, we're way too old for this. But now TikTok's happening and it's like the kids have had it for so long. But now the now this this whole quarantine thing is causing all of us to get it. So now it's not cool. You know? <laughs> yeah. like, now that we're all on it, it's like the kids are probably just like, oh, Jesus. I, d I dare you to I dare you to title this episode "What's Worse, TikTok or Coronavirus?" Oh my god, <laughs> oh my god. that's a great way to get demonetized real fast. Yeah, right. that's fair. That's have fair. you guys noticed that if you put um, the word coronavirus or have like that in your content, I don't even know if me saying it right now. Uh, sometimes we'll get your videos demonetized on YouTube. Yeah, I saw yeah. Some, I saw some, a report about that. I don't know why. You need to actually get views on your videos first to get demonetized. So we'll let you know. <laughs> we don't worry about that. We don't worry about that. <laughs> Well, hopefully, if you guys are watching this episode, you go check out Kind of Funny after this. If you uh, yeah, what's the link? YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny. funny. There it is. There we go. do a great series called In Review, where we're going through. Uh, next week, we're going to start with Back to the Future, which is going to be awesome. We're going to watch all those and rank those movies. Oh, fuck yeah. Cool. It's great. Could, I, could we get a sneak peek in which one's your favorite? Uh, yeah, it's no, going to yeah. be Back to the Future we watch 100%. Week to week. Okay. It might be two, Nick. It might it's be gonna two. Be one. <laughs> Garen, I, I'll bet you $5 it's one. <laughs> I don't want it's to. It's a bad bet because you know me. I'll just, I'll just start yelling until everyone goes, just yeah. let, him, let the baby have what he wants. Let him <laughs> we'll tune in to find out to in review starting. The, the, the thrilling conclusion. Might actually be out already by the time this episode comes out. Ah, oh, there cool. we go. Yeah. So we'll. The thing is, it's, it's always fun to watch those back to back. You're my, it might be two. I, I haven't watched one and two back to back in a really long time. So we'll see. We can all happens. agree on one thing. It won't be three. It, it certainly be won't three. be three. <laughs> three. I'll decide to watch it again though. Yeah, totally. None of them are bad. Hello, everyone. Just want to mention that this episode of Always Open is brought to you by MeUndies. It's officially spring, which means it's officially spring cleaning. Yes, that's a thing. And if you're not doing it, you should, especially with your underwear drawer and your relationship with toxic, old, tattered undies and move on to a membership with the softest undies to ever grace your nethers. A fresh start for a new spring. Uh, as you guys know, I talk about MeUndies all the time. I cannot recommend them enough. They are the softest thing I've ever worn, especially now that I'm spending a lot more time at home. Uh, I love lounging around in their pajama pants, their loungewear. I'm basically decked out head to toe in MeUndies when I'm not on camera. Uh, it's so soft. I cannot recommend it enough. They come in all different types of colors and patterns as well. They're my absolute favorite underwear, hands down. Why would you need an undie membership? Honestly, because it's fun, it's easy, and it's a way to give your future self a present every month. A membership with MeUndies is full of perks like site-wide savings, early access, free shipping, and new ridiculously soft undies delivered straight to your door each month. Building your undie collection makes your adult life just a tad easier as well. More undies equals less laundry. It's pretty much just science at that point. MeUndies has a great offer for our listeners, that's you guys. For any first-time purchasers, when you order any MeUndies, you get 15% off and free shipping. This is a no-brainer, especially because we have a 100% satisfaction guarantee as well. To get 15% off your first pair, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com open. That's MeUndies.com open. Now back to the show. Mm -hmm. um, so let's, let's start things off. We have an icebreaker here, but I feel like we've we've broken the ice pretty we've good. We've broken the ice. ice. That ice, we fucking smashed it. We've we been know around each other. it a couple times. So let's uh, let's move on to our there first segment question. This one comes from Diana L. And Diana wants to know, what is your first time having someone else go down on you? As opposed to myself. 
Do you guys want to watch? You know, if you can throw your legs back. Yeah, that's why I'm in the corner here, so I can just pop. <laughs> are you Are you guys watching Dave, the little Dicky show? Oh, no. Oh. Everyone in the world needs to stop what they're doing and watch this show. It is It is the funniest thing I've ever seen, and it has the greatest going down on yourself joke I've ever heard. That's all I'm going to tell you now. Okay. I'll have to check that out after. That's my homework for tonight. Yes. So this question, yeah, <laughs> this is a great this is, question. This is a question that that honestly leads to the most unbelievable story that I have in my in my life, and it's one of those things where, as I'm saying it, people aren't going to believe it, but it is it is the truth. This is a true story that really happened, and I will say there are twists, there are turns, and uh, it did didn't end well. If this starts uh, off with you having a giant penis, I no, I'm not gonna no, it wasn't that. honestly, this is people so, are never going to believe it. That my penis was it's, twelve it's inches long. That, that I even look back on, I'm like, like that didn't happen, right? But it might, it did, it, it did, and there's proof. Like I, I, I'm still in contact with people. I'm excited to verify story. that it's true. You've What's heard it happening? before, Nick. You've heard have it I? before, but okay, I'll, I'll try to condense oh, it. I, I think I have. Okay, I'll condense it into into this bit. I was probably fourteen okay. at the time. And uh, it was one of my friend's birthdays, and uh, it was one of those big things where they were going to celebrate at his cousin's house. So we were going to, like, go a couple cities away for the weekend and stay at his cousin's, like, giant house. So we do that, and we're, like, sleeping over. And all of his cousins were there, all his friends, I, or all his, like, family. I didn't know any of them. I hadn't met them before. Um, but he had this one cousin who was, like, she was attractive. She was a little bit older, which I think she was 16. Nice. <laughs> but she felt yeah. like she was, like, a woman, you know? <laughs> oh. um, but I was just like, I can't even like talk to her. I'm just like 14 year old boy. I'm scared about that, whatever. And uh, at some point, my friend was like, "Hey, I need to go with my mom to go like get get like the food and stuff, like the wings or whatever. So can you just like stay here?" I was like, "Yeah, sure. I'm gonna like, can I go in your room? I'm just gonna play Halo." And he was like, "Yeah, sure." So I go in the room and I'm just chilling by myself. At some point, this girl, I swear to God, just comes in, sits next to me, and I'm just like. Like, oh, hey, we started talking. And I was so nervous. And I was like, this is, why are you talking to me? This is insane. She's like, oh, can I play with you? I was like, oh, yes, you can. Yeah. What? And at that moment, like, I was like, this is the coolest thing that's ever happened to me. The super hot <laughs> in my mind at the point. Uh, <laughs> older woman it wants to play, hit, wants to play video games with me. Like, let's do it. So we started playing video games. And like that, trust me, that's not the unbelievable part of the story. We're going and she was really good at the game. Like we were playing co-op and I was just like, this what is What else this is she really rad. good at? And then, so, then she was like, hold on, I need to go to the bathroom. She like gets up and goes. She comes back and we start playing again and she was horrible. And I was like, oh, that's weird. Like, what's she trying to do? And I was like, in my mind, I'm like, is she trying to send me a hint that she wants to stop playing games? And like, I was so stupid and naive back then. But I was like, well, no, let's keep playing. And then at some point she's like, hold on, I need to go change. So she leaves and she comes back. She comes back in just underwear. And I'm like, oh my God. And what she's just fuck, like, hey, dude? have you ever played video games in your underwear? And I was like, I have not. She's like, do you want to? I'm like, yes, I do. <laughs> you know, I'm in my underwear. She's in her underwear. I'll never forget. She was wearing this like super unnecessarily lacy blue little set. Magic set. So all right. Nice. And this At was I, my heart was racing. I was freaking out. I'm like, I don't know what's about to happen. I don't I'm not prepared for this. Nobody told me about this. And then she's like, no, we got to keep playing. I'm like, all right. So we're playing this damn game. And at some point she gets up again to go do something else. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? When she comes back, she was wearing a yellow matching set. And I was like, I'm so confused. I must be dreaming. I don't understand what the hell's going on. And she was she kept insisting that we keep playing. And I was like, See, this I, is how this is how paranoid I am. At this point, I'd be like, I'm getting pranked. My friends are pranking me. Oh, yeah, hundred percent. No, that's that's what this I thought. Is, this is bad. This is a bad yeah. thing. Greg Miller is in the closet right now. I can hear him fucking. We don't know each laughing. other yet, but he already yeah, is playing this there. from the future. He's, yeah, exactly. Honestly, this is one of those things where I'm like, I do feel like someone was pranking me overall. I because I don't I don't understand how it happened. Because I'm gonna skip forward a little bit. It's revealed they're twins. There's two of this girl. Shut they were it. fucking with me, and they the they thought door. it would be funny, like because now now I'm this like you know chunky, moderately good looking human being. I'm gonna take that. Back then I was this like hot little like twink of love. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it's my favorite uh, show. <laughs> I, I was a little like exactly. I was this little thirst trap skinny boy, and um, these girls just start like they, they just jump onto me, and I was just like oh my god. But then. Then they were just like, like, hey, are you comfortable with this? And I was so not comfortable with it because I was so like scared about it. Next thing I know, one of them was going down on me. And that was the first time I, I ever had someone go down on me. What but the then fuck? so here's here's the end of this story. All right. 
one of them went to the other one and they almost kissed. And I was like, no. <laughs> and I just told him, no, don't do that. Cause yep. they're sisters. Yeah. yeah. And Twin I was sisters. freaking out and Same person. they kind of just made fun of me after that. And uh, it didn't end well after that. So it, it wasn't much of a going down on, but there was technical D and M. You oh, know okay. what I mean? so, so you didn't go to completion. No, no, okay. not at all. And then they made fun of me and they continued to make fun of me forever where they're like, why the fuck would you not just go along with it? And I was traumatized by this experience. Yeah. Yeah. And the biggest thing, twin sisters, one of them named Precious, one of them named Kimberly. <laughs> what the fuck was the thought process there? It's Anyways. Like that's favoritism like, if I ever heard it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You're going to be Precious. Exactly. Yeah. Kimberly. <laughs> and just be, just be Kim. Yeah. Dude. I have that so many questions. Unbelievable. Yeah, great story. And it, it sucks because it, it was so awkward because I was stuck with them for like the whole weekend. And like, yeah. I didn't know who they were telling or why. They, you know, I was a little kid. So it was like even more scary. And, I, and then I told my friend and he didn't believe me. And I'm like, well, this is happening. And then later he like kind of confronted one of them. And they're like, oh, yeah, no, no, no. That totally happened. So this is your friend. Your The twins were related to your friend. They were their cousin. cousin yeah cousins i always oh, wonder goodness. when stuff like that happens especially with like sisters what's the discussion beforehand i don't know but like, i was like i'm not down i'm just not down i'll say i'll say this i, I have a brother i have a brother and that is the discussion that i never hope to have with him <laughs> hey dude there's something. a chick in the other room <laughs> you want to go yeah. share you want to think it would be okay if we trade underwear yeah i'll go in yellow her. do you want to go in there oh, god That'd be the worst. Especially that young. Like, I get maybe if you're in into your 20s or whatever, and you and your sister are maybe, like, into some weird shit together. I don't know. But, like, being that, it's, like, 16 that they were. Yeah. Type. There's something happening there. What are Precious and Kimberly up to these days? I, what are they doing? I, I know exactly what they're up to. <laughs> <laughs> what what like, are they, they up they to? They still exist. Like, they're real people that I need yep. to, like, mm -hmm. deal with in my life every once in a while. Oh, so you still see them? I'm going to say very this. infrequently, but I do see them. Yeah, so I'm well. going to I'm going to say this right now, Tim. We have a show called We Have Cool Friends, where we <laughs> interview our cool friends. Not a I chance. think you got to get Precious and Kimberly no, there, and you, we got to get to the. Test. I'll host it. We got to get to the bottom of this story. What, what would it thinking? take, Tim? How far would you have gone? And then could ha could Tim have banged both of you? <laughs> could he have done that? I mean, I don't. I don't. Th I was so scared at that point. Like, I, it was. I don't think I could have accomplished anything at all oh, man God. i think you know honestly i think you probably spared yourself further embarrassment because yeah, imagine yeah. this situation she goes for 13 seconds longer you accidentally come and then you're the kid that prematurely came all over two sisters <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah do you have to like share the love in that case like go like oprah cares about you kimberly precious get over here now it's <laughs> a sprinkler he goes <laughs> Then, oh, back that, to precious. See, here, here's the problem with stories like that, right? Because I, I believe that happened to you. I trust you. I believe that you can't happened make to you. that up. You, you can't know. make this shit up. But the problem is, I think young people see this kind of thing in porn and then go, "That's commonplace." And then I have to tell them, "No, that's not what all of your none of your experiences are going to be like that. That shit doesn't happen in real life." And then Tim goes, "But it did happen to me." I mean, that's the it thing. It did happen you, to me. I think it's a generational thing. We've talked about this a lot, Nick. But I feel mm -hmm. like me and my friends have a lot of similar types of situations happening. And I think it's because porn was so much readily available for oh, us yeah. growing up. So we were all like, just like, this is what you do. And then we all made a lot of mistakes. I know. It's it's one of the reasons Together. why I just keep hiding porn all over my apartment in the <laughs> hopes that my wife will see it and go, huh, okay. That's oh, something people that. would think about doing with each other. Not like crazy shit, just like a little dirty, you know? I'll just send her links be like, hey, what do you think of this uh, condo we could move into? And she clicks on it and I hear, oh, that's great from the room next to me. I'm like, I got her. I fucking got her. I Rick rolled her with <laughs> Sneaky porn. with it. Just like Sneak slowly slide a pair of yellow and blue lingerie under her door. <laughs> see what sticks. Yeah. God, that'd be amazing. That'd be so Tim, funny. Tim, do you still, does that ever come up when you see the twins at like wedding or graduation? Mm -hmm. Are they ever just like... It's like wedding situations where I see them. And like, I, I swear to God, like I feel bullied by these. And and like, to this day, like, I don't know. That makes like, me I don't so sad. Last time I had like an actual real conversation with them, but it is a lot of them looking at me and laughing. Like it is, it is very, 
it's not. It, I'll be honest with you. If two good looking twins, even to this day, I'm a 40 year old man. I'm pretty confident. But if two like twins looked at me and started laughing, I don't think I'd get erection for another month. <laughs> yeah. What would be yeah. worse? What, what would be worse? Uh, like two hot, your age twins, a few years older, laughing at you or like two seventh graders pointing and laughing at you? What would now? be more demeaning? Ooh, probably. I mean, having dealt with this situation, I can tell you this one. It's it's just like it's it's unbelievable how little it makes you feel like because you know, and it's like high school kids seemed like true adults, like they mm-hmm. seemed so much older. But now that we're all like we're all similar ages, and it feels that way. You know, at least most of us right. are similar ages, and it oh, feels <laughs> and it feels that way, right? But like we are all actually a couple years apart here and there, right? right. But. These girls, even though they were only two years older than me then, they still feel like they were like 10 years older than me. And when I saw them a couple of years, like, years back now, like they felt like true adults that were just <laughs> laughing at me. Oh, my Yeah, but the other thing is too, is that is that kids don't have a filter. They don't have 20 or 30 other years of life experience to be like, hey, maybe don't act like that. So right. it's just like viciousness in its rawest form, you know? There is like, nothing they worse than teenagers making fun of you oh god, oh god. It's, it hurts it's the worst it's, yeah that would suck because there's nothing you could do to like you can't be like well your mom is probably sleeping with the milk band like eh. like <laughs> right. there's nothing you your could do to back definitely to getting divorced yeah. one day <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's because it's tough it's real yeah, tough. That, the biggest thing for me was like in my the years after that like with my friends and like the people that were there that kind of knew it all happened like there was the big debate on was it a threesome and we ended up deciding it was not a threesome it's because, definitely a threesome but like I, the, I there wasn't connection between there was three people in the room but like only one of them did that but didn't you say but they, didn't they, they make almost out with the other made one? out they almost made out but i like stopped them so it yeah. didn't happen god i feel like they should be the ones who should be embarrassed in front right. of you right Hey, I understand, but that's just not no, how this works. That's not how it goes. That is just not how it goes. I, you have to understand that most men, whether they're all admitted to or not, just mostly feel embarrassed during sexual settings like that. I just every time I take my pants off, I'm like, well, here we are. <laughs> Don't laugh. If you want an example of, of what I looked like at this at like pretty much this exact timeline, go to Instagram.com slash Tim Gettys. And uh, it'll it's like I, one of the last things I posted. And, uh, oh, you just, have like a, a picture of you from when you were fourteen or so. I gotta oh, yeah. do this. Yeah, Tim. Yeah, Tim. Like, is it the one where you look like Stan from the Eminem video? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. <laughs> I need Tim to just look like Eminem. Right now. Yeah, he I'm was, like, he, yeah, he, I, yeah, he's great. And yeah, I just pop that up on my. I was I was wearing those SpongeBob boxers that I'm wearing there during. Oh wow! Yeah, look at me. Look, wow. look. Tim. You You're have right. You do look then. like you do look like a twink of love. Right. And that hair. So yeah, spiky. I know. It's great. I think you should go back to that look, honestly. I get a little I'm so close. Seeing what seeing that picture and knowing what that kid went through, man. I know. I feel bad for it him. It's differently. <laughs> yeah. I do want to tell him it's all gonna be okay. <laughs> Things get better. You're gonna <laughs> be gonna podcasting on April first, twenty twenty from your home theater. <laughs> exactly. You I'll may or may admit, not I don't know. I don't think I know your story. My first, the first story of it, so the, the first time someone went down on me, mm-hmm. um, is the, ooh, okay, sure, why not? We'll talk, we'll tell that story. So there was a girl that I really, really liked, uh, all throughout basically, I think it was like my junior year of high school, and she was a senior, and she liked my other friend, uh, my other guy friend, and he liked this girl that liked me. So it was this weird love square, I think where everyone liked the wrong person. And I was oh, like fun. mad about this girl. I was mad about her all through my junior year. And then finally, last couple of months, I'm like, senior, you know, uh, summertime's coming up. It's fine. I'll just, you know, she's gone. I'm not going to see her next year. I got to get over her. I spent two months just soul searching. And I finally got over her. And it was like the second, I swear to God, I don't know what it is about people. But the second I woke up, I was like, and, and thought I am, didn't think about her. I was like, I'm done. I'm, I'm over this person. That's when my, like my, I think it was, it might have been a pager actually. That, that, <laughs> that, that right. Oh my God. It dude. might have actually been a pager that, that I got a page from her. This is back in the day. And uh, I was like, oh my God, this, this person, she's actually calling me. 
And uh, I called her and she was like, what are you doing? I was like, well, it just so happens that my parents were out of town that week. My parents used to go out of town every summer for like two weeks. It was basically like, we need to get the hell away from the kids. They'd go out with the other, all of our cousins and friends, parents, they'd all go out. And then of course, what we do, we would throw a week long party at our yeah, place dude, where it was basically like you would wake up big Lebowski style, just like a cigarette, a cocktail, and you just walk into the pool. You just that's how you showered was just get in the pool. Oh, that's awesome. we were classic the Bud Light on ice. Oh, the Bud Light on ice. Oh yeah, we used to. We, that was when we um, and I'd like to say pioneered this, but I won't take credit for it. But if you do it, you have to give me. No credit. one's gonna fight you, put, you, so I think you can. You put the pool. You put the uh, the, the the pool chairs into the pool. Like, you know, the lounge oh, chairs that go yeah. around the pool, you take them, you put them in the pool so you can just sit. Nobody likes to stand in pool like a fucking poor person. You just got to sit in the pool <laughs> like, a low, like the lower middle class person that I was growing up. <laughs> uh, we were, t- at the, you know, and we were at the the tail end of one of these nights of partying. And this is, I grew up in a, in the desert. So it was, you know, nine o'clock at night, still 75, maybe 80 degrees outside. Everyone's still raging. And there's a knock on my door. And sure enough, she came over and I was just like, this is so weird because I would have given literally anything for this to happen like six months ago. Um, and, and now I just feel like this is a random encounter. We were still attracted to each other, but I was just like, I'm not really I don't want anything out of this. And she was like, you're an idiot. I don't want anything out of this either. We're, I'm just coming over to hook up. And it was the first time in my life that I was like, wait a minute, you're telling me <laughs> that people can just hook up with each other. You can just. <laughs> I don't have to be in like, because I was like, I was the guy that was like, I want to be in love. I hadn't had sex yet. I I waited so long until I, you know, gave my flower to someone who was worthy of it. And then she was like, no, no, I just came over. I want to hook up with you. I was like, okay, cool. We went upstairs and I was like, what do you want to do? She's like, well, I want to give you a blowjob. And I'm like, who am I to say no to this? (laughs) Right. Gracious offer. And I had never had it before. Now, no one had ever talked to me about this before. Okay. I didn't know this was a thing. And Tim, I don't know if, you, if you've ever experienced this before, but you think that – so it's opposite of sex. The first time I had sex, I was like, that was the best five seconds of my life. Like, can we do that <laughs> again? Like, that was amazing. It was just like – it was this like, – you know, I saw like hypoca- – the first time I got a blowjob, I kid you not, 45 minutes later, I felt so bad that I couldn't come. I was like, I don't know what's wrong with me. This I think feels you're nervous. Amazing. Is it because it was just like too I, intense yeah. and like there was like – no, I think it's and it's just because there is a certain um, – yeah, maybe – I don't know, nervous is self-consciousness where you have to get out of your own head mm. to allow yourself to enjoy it. And like it's it's just kind of always been that way with me where I go, this is fantastic. Eh, I'm taking a little longer than I should. Now I'm worried that her jaw is going to start hurting. Oh, my God. Is her jaw going to start hurting and then she's never going to want to come back? What do I have on the calendar for tomorrow? That's how my brain <laughs> starts working. And then finally, she was like, you just need to relax. And then she said the dirtiest thing anyone's ever said to me, which I pro- I won't repeat now. But Damn it. <laughs> No, you have to let us know. All right, I'll say, okay. She said, she looked at me. She was, I was like, she's like, it's totally okay. I'm like, I'm so sorry. She's like, it's totally okay. And then she said, hmm. She said, come in my mouth. I want to taste it. Hey. And I was like, <laughs> go. It did it. It did it. And then I was like, I really, and this was at the time, like I was the guy that would like, I didn't want to have sex, but I would always go down on women, mm-hmm. girls, I should say. And they weren't like, well, I guess whatever um, <laughs> people. And so I was like, I would like, I would like to reciprocate that. And she was like, I got to be a hundred percent honest with you. I'm tired. <laughs> like, I don't want to, I'm going to go home now. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Wow. And then she left and uh, that was it. That was the last time I saw her. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever talk to her after that i mean we we talked like here and there like uh through god I, I mean i must have seen her again but she was a senior and i went into my senior year so she had graduated already so she went off to go to whatever college she went to and that was like that was pretty much it wow yeah it was it was crazy it was i mean it was amazing i was i think back on times like that and i'm like oh my god you should have definitely tried to, to hit her up again but at that point you have to remember like it was that it was that feeling. You know the feeling you get where you're like, you're not just over someone. You've actually like, you just don't want to see them. You're like, what was I thinking even liking that person? Oh, yeah. Like I moved on to, so I had, think at that point I'd moved on to a crush on someone else. So that, that line between in high school, especially when you like, you're just like, this person is the biggest thing in the world. It's your crush. There's nothing else matters. The sky can't possibly be as blue unless this person's with you. 
to ah, I don't really want to talk to that person. Eh, I'm not going to answer that call. Like that that to me is like a it just happens so fast. Sometimes and she that happens caught me on this side of it, you know. With crushes, I find that sometimes that happens if you have a crush on someone, you feel that way about them, but the second you realize that they like you back or have interest in you, you're like, well, that might have been it anymore. too. <laughs> That's it it's it's the old yeah, it's the old adage of like I don't want to I wouldn't want to be a part of a club that would have me as a member. I'm like, I don't know. You want what you, you can't have or something like that. Yeah, I yeah. guess you want what you can't. Yeah, it's probably a better adage. Yeah, it's probably a better way <laughs> Man, of saying those it. stories are was good. fucking amazing. It I is like how I can't. Is. Mine is like not exciting at all. It's probably a little weird because – They all are. The whole thing is weird. People's mouths on people's genitals is weird. It's great. The Especially first time you're going to do it, young age. come yeah. on. Like it's weird. Let's get weird, Barb. So um, for me – I've, I've talked about this a lot, but I had a boyfriend that I dated from ages 16 to 22. And that boyfriend, because of me and my insecurities, uh, never went down on me in that entire six years. What, um, what were the, from 18 to 22? 16 to 22. 16 to 22. Because I was just uncomfortable with that idea. I was just like, I feel weird about what's down there. Like, does it smell weird? Does it tastes weird like i don't know my body that well and i'm not comfortable with someone doing that so i like never wanted him to and then when i moved to austin and got my first boyfriend here i was like 22 at the time uh the one of the first nights we were hooking up he just like initiated that and because it was a new relationship i was like fuck it like new rules new rules no time in this. If it goes south in, in an hour, it's fine. I got nothing in it, right? He, he wanted to do it too. And like, I have never in my entire life been in my own head about anything until that moment. <laughs> where yeah. I'm just like, I, I don't see a future right now where I'm going to be able to finish from this. <laughs> like, uh -huh. It's weird, right? Yeah. Has that changed? Yes, absolutely. Um, it took, honestly, like he was probably the one, the saving grace in this situation because he was <laughs> consistently like helping me through that. And he's just like, I, I like doing this. I, I, I want to make you feel good, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so he kind of got me into it in that way. But it's just, it's strange to me that I experienced pretty much everything else sexually before doing that. Yeah. yeah, I like to think of head like getting head and, and giving it as like a Will Ferrell movie. You know, at first, the first few Will Ferrell movies I saw, I'm like, I don't think I like this guy. But over time, I got more and more used to how his comedy style affected me. <laughs> and after viewing more and more of his movies, I'm like, you know what? You can make me laugh in 30 seconds now, Will Ferrell. <laughs> Wow, what a great analogy. That was great. Yeah, you I will things say out, you should clip that out. I told uh, <laughs> I think I told Meryl about this, but this is probably the funniest, most crazy time that I experienced it. But this <laughs> this was after I became single um after my last relationship where I was just like going crazy. I was just like, Love I just want to have some fun. Like I'm single, I'm young, whatever. <laughs> there was a guy I met at a bar who worked at a bar. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love yeah. this story. How many, how many tattoos did this guy have? None. Oh, what but about a beard? Did he was a, beard? a very, he, I don't think he, no, he didn't have a beard either. This guy, I, mean, I have no he idea. He doesn't exist. looks like that, <laughs> Jesus Christ. But uh, he, I had like met him a couple days prior because we were doing some event at this bar. And I remember this guy because he was such a smooth talker. He told me that I was the most beautiful woman he's ever seen in his life. Which is a great pickup line, by the way. Classic line. If you're ever looking for something. Does that work? It did on me. Okay. All right, then. <laughs> uh, so a couple nights later where I was just like, fuck it, I'm going to go see if this guy's working again. Sure enough, he was. I ended up staying at the bar while he closed up. And I was like, I don't know you well enough to take you back to my place. And he's like, I have a roommate, so I don't know if I, I could take you back to my place. And I was like, you know what? I'm an independent woman. I'm going to go book a room at the W and we're going to go And so I booked a room at the W hotel. It was like $300. <laughs> <laughs> the worst money I've ever spent in my life. And oh, yeah. this guy proceeded to go down on me for three hours. Oh no. That seems like good money. I guess, <laughs> I guess yeah. so. $100 per hour. I guess yeah. so. But uh, we didn't have That's sex or do anything else. And that was it. And then, I never saw him again. Mm. Wow. Mm. 
that is fantastic. Now, the W is nice. The W is. I'll tell you this though. When I walk into the W, I think to myself, "This is a place where you go down on someone for three hours." Hell yeah! yeah. Oh yeah! This is that kind of place. There's it's no like, other hotel in Austin that you can do that. You can't. I'll tell you this, man. I don't want anything to do with a, like a, a three hour long blowjob in the Fairmont. This is not. Gonna, <laughs> that's, not <sexy. laughs> that's not sexy at all. <laughs> That's amazing. Those those stories though. I I I I, uh, I appreciate that you haven't quite graduated to the point where you're like this. Oh, Three hundred dollars or my car. Let's go with the car. Let's go into the parking lot and just pop right. it out in the back seat. Pro Honestly, maneuver. Use the back seat. Don't use the front seat. I had to learn that one the hard way. Oh God, dude. Got to get I've, over the stick shift. I think I've only had sex in a car like twice in my life, but it's been very uncomfortable. Barb, yeah, do you feel too. like you like your return on investment was? was good for that like your three hundred dollars and i'm sure he was giving you all night for so the story say. though no but, but like yeah, was it story. was I it three hours because he was bad at it kind of oh uh, then it's the he worst. wasn't that great it was kind of like i was enjoying it but i was like you're not getting me not to, the, get to the end of this um <sighs> that's honestly there were so many things i did during that year of being single. I loved it. Just for always open. <laughs> just yeah, for I know. Show. I love it, dude. It's for there, was, there was one point where um, Barbara That's where I play video it. games. <laughs> Barbara made a separate Slack channel and it was literally called like Barb's Location. And she'd be like, I'm here today. This is where I'm going. And we'd be like, all right, just stay safe. I, love <laughs> I was it, like, dude. I want someone I would... to know where I am. <laughs> Yeah, the, I mean, obviously not now because you're in a wonderful, committed relationship. But if there was a Slack channel that just had snippets of your exploits back then, I would have loved to have subscribed to that. So I would like put me on this. What's what bartender four hour long excursion is bar is Barb going on tonight? <laughs> there, there was that there was that beautiful moment of time where it was, it was Bethany and Barb single at the same oh, time. Jesus yep. Christ. I, it, me and Nick would just just talk about it. Just be like, what do you what do you think's happening right now? You know, yeah, actually. Eventually, it got to the point where Tim would just like look at me, and I'd be like, "I know, I know. it's great. I don't know what it's. Ha- I don't know what's happening. <laughs> but either, a good time. either it's making the world better, or it's going to destroy everything we've worked <laughs> for. But I'm Here cool with it either way. I'm fine with it either way. Such supportive friends. I love it. Oh, you gotta love it. Well, I mean, you know, the, the, you get to a certain point where you, you get into a committed relationship, and I honestly believe it's just better to be like with someone than when without someone but then you see your friends go through those periods of wonderful chaos and you know it has to end you know you can't keep that pace forever but it is there is some part of you that goes i'm living a little vicariously through you because you get to have that feeling of anything can happen tonight anything and like oh, yeah. you know I, it's it's something it's what you give up to be married or to, to be with someone is you get a lot more in return we have like instead of anything happening like i know what's gonna happen tonight it's gonna be great me and my wife are probably gonna watch netflix i'm trying to get her to tiger king she's Hell like yeah. i don't like Hell mullets yeah. and i'm like you'll love mullets after this though. <laughs> <laughs> seven episodes boy? later oh Maybe god that show is crazy that but yeah crazy. but you don't have that you don't have that friday night excitement you know it's like ah yeah, I'm I'm I mean it's person. it's good and bad. I think it's it's fun to have those experiences in your life, but I think once you find the person you want to be with, then great. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It is that time frame thing. It's like there it, it's kind of like a long distance relationship. There needs to be an end in sight because if there's no like date where you're like, well, by this point, I'm gonna be over this. You can get crazy, and the problem with that is you you can't put a date on finding someone. It just kind of has to happen. So right. you need to like. Not, it's, it's really similar to like how I'm feeling right now with toll work. Every day feels like a Sunday. Like I, every night I go to bed with that feeling of like, oh man, I have so much to do. And it just feels like it's just on repeat. It's different days, different things are happening, but like it just feels on repeat. And I feel like Sunday is still a day off. It's still fun, but there's also all this other shit that's looming. And I feel like that hookup time, that moment of the, the singularity, yeah. as Nick used to call it. Mm. Uh, it's like you, you got to kind of, Take advantage of it, but don't let it consume you, you know? Yeah, because if it goes on too long, that's when you start getting, like, guys specifically start getting Peter Pan syndrome, where you just start constantly, like, it's that forever child. You constantly think there's something better right around the corner, and you just can't realize that maybe you have something amazing in front of you, but you have to just take the leap and dedicate yourself to it, which I think was probably the scariest thing I've ever done. Uh, Maybe a close second leaving IGN for kind of funny, but getting married and and committing to someone, I was like, whoa, I'm actually going to do this. That was a, that was a gut check moment. Yeah. Yeah. Mer, what about you? Oh God. Give us the Uh, (laughs) 
I'm trying to remember. It was uh, the girl that I was dating in high school. And we were in her basement, which is also doubled as her bedroom. And I just remember, like, I was 16 years old. I think she, or I was 17 and she was 16, something like that. Like, she was younger, a little bit younger than me. But uh, her mom was upstairs. Her mom did not know, <gasps> obviously, as you do. Did she think you guys were uh, just friends? A gay teen. Yeah, I mean, she found out very quickly because uh, I was coming over way too often for just a close friendship. <laughs> um, you're, spe- remember- like, you're spending the night a lot. Yeah, <laughs> she's like, where I'm- what are your parents up to? Do you guys like, moan you- in your sleep? Like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> um, and I remember it, you know, because, you know, you watch porn and you see all this stuff happening and you're like, all right, it's going to happen. And I just remember I couldn't get this image out of my head because she had the super, super curly hair. And the way she put her hair up made her look like a troll doll. Like she like, she didn't grab it. You know, most women, Barb, you can attest, like you grab your hair at the base of your neck and then you pull it up, right? Yeah. That she like grabbed it and like pineapple it. <laughs> like and man so, bun style? Oh yeah, like man bun style. And the, I, I could, it didn't feel good. Didn't feel, it wasn't sexy to me to be like. See the troll doll right between your legs. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think like, I mean, maybe two minutes in. I was just like, hey, this isn't, I didn't let it go on for three hours. Maybe I should have. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe you don't yeah. know what well, would have happened. No, maybe I don't you know. Maybe you spent $300 on the hotel room. We might maybe. Have worth maybe at the Holiday Inn, playing View, Texas. Maybe that's <laughs> where I could have gone. Had you done it before at this point? I had done it to her, yeah. And oh, this really? was the first time that she was reciprocating. Um, but yeah, I just, I was just like, nah. I And still to this day, I mean, it's something I enjoy, but it's not my... It's not my go-to, you know. It's not. It's mm. not my. It's not my uh, playbook. It's not my playbook for the most yeah. part. You got to scroll a bit to get to how, it. How? Yeah. How long until it took you? Until it took everyone to be able to just be like, "This is a thing that happens, and it's it's a normal time period from start to finish." Pretty quickly, I think. What do you mean? Like, I mean, like for me, I don't know. Maybe you, you, the first time you did it, you were able to have an orgasm. But for me, it, it still, it took like years for me to get comfortable enough with my body and for the act oh, to yeah. be like, oh, I'm going to relax. And this is going to be a five minute experience for both of us instead of an eternity of me being like, how do I stop this? Because it's not going to work. For me, right. it, yeah. it took a, it took a couple of years and being like just more comfortable with myself to be able to tell someone what I wanted. Yeah. And like kind of instruct because especially like the female anatomy, um, p- oh everyone's God, different. And you really have to like learn someone's body and what they like. Like, you, you know what it's like when I was searching for puzzles, I came across one <laughs> online, of course, because there's none left in the stores as we already established. One was a gradient puzzle and oh it was God. like a gradient of like purple to pink, which is very, oh. they're very close in the spectrum. Like what? crazy person can actually put this puzzle together that's like the female vagina mm-hmm. absolutely yeah 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 and it's always yep. funny whenever I, I would encounter guys who are just like yeah i'm really good at this and i'm like are you like <laughs> any anyone that's ever said that is not the, I, the thing I, is i, I, I will that not be true i will stand by the fact that i am good at it but not as a general like blanket anyone that walks in here i'll be good at i'm good at getting good at it with each individual person yeah you're, a, that good, sense? you're a good listener you're and a good, good. learner yeah, I ask questions. I make it fun. I'll bring snacks. <laughs> it's a great time. Play some cool music. Oh yeah, I throw some out some great, you know. But 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 that's important, right? And that was something I had to learn about myself too. Was I had one partner who was like, she would actually ask me questions like that. She was like, "Hey, how do you? Where, when you masturbate, how do you? Do you lay down? You sit? What do you normally do? Uh, how do you like this? Do you like the squeeze? Do you like things?" You know, she would and she would we would experiment and it was fun and I felt like it was an environment that I could actually like be comfortable in. Mm. And then eventually we got to a point where she learned what I liked. I learned what I liked and didn't like. And then we could just sort of meet and not all the time it would happen fast. But for the most part, we got to a point where I was like, we have my parents are coming over in five minutes. Let's can we we can do this. Let's go. Can we do it? <laughs> yeah. We can get this done. Get this done. <laughs> Three star challenge. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, I feel like I, I'm even closer to you guys than I was before. I love it. I like that. It's a great place to be. Um, Feel free to leave a comment below in our video telling us how uh, the first time someone went down on you and how it went. I can't wait to read these. If you want. These are going to be great. All right. So we'll we'll wrap up the show with a box of issues question. And this one comes from an anonymous user. And this person writes, Dear Always Open Crew, I'm a 27-year-old female and I have yet to lose my virginity. 
Even though I've never had a relationship, I believe I am bisexual and have always been rather embarrassed by my lack of experience, both in dating and sex. I know I shouldn't harp on being a virgin so much, but I know that if I start dating, the elephant in the room will obviously be hanging over my head and come up like word vomit. Should I just have a couple one night stands before actually looking into a relationship for the experience? And how do I go about bringing it up in the first place? Anonymous. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, there's this show called The Bachelor. There's a show called oh. The Bachelorette. Yes. Um, and I've, I've experienced a lot of uh, this issue this is not, in that this show. This is not going to help anyone. This is not going to um, help You're anyone. with some fans will, up in here. Nothing, Don't worry. Nothing there was good a season, comes from these two shows. <laughs> there was a season with Colton. And the entire se- he was The Bachelor. And the entire season is about him being a virgin. Yeah. And they wouldn't shut up about it. And it was the absolute worst thing where it's like, yo, this is important. It's not the key thing. He's more than that. He's so right. much more than that. Why are you making that the entire season storyline? Then recently on The Bachelor, uh, on this season of The Bachelor, we had this girl, Madison, who was a virgin, mm-hmm. and she didn't say anything until way too late. And that caused another set of issues. You need to meet in the middle. Don't be Madison. Don't be Colton. You just need to understand that <laughs> this is something you need to talk about, but it is not what defines you. I would say get it out of the way early. But don't let it be the thing that makes you who you are to that other Get it person. out of the way early as in like talking about it? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I definitely don't recommend just going out and doing the deed for the sake of doing the deed. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's going to – I just don't – that doesn't feel right. I don't think that's going to be something that you're going to be happy with um, because, you know, I think there's there is – a lot of times people don't – they discount how intimate the sexual act is, even when you're doing it with someone you don't know. Um, and so you can cause some negative effects there. If you just go out and kind of get drunk at a bar and kind of don't remember what's going on. I don't recommend that. Yeah. Um, if you have someone that you're attracted to and you think, Hey, this might be a person I want to get down with tonight. Um, then I don't see any reason why you shouldn't initiate that hookup and see where it goes. Just knowing that if, again, if that little voice inside of you says, man, nah, I don't really feel like going all the way right now, just, end it don't worry about it you know yeah um that, that's I, I think that people put a lot of pressure on themselves for the importance of the act and you know to each their own if 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 it's super important to you you know if you're if you're a person who's like i really want to save myself for this wonderful person that's coming along um great i thought that for a really long time and then eventually i just met someone that was really cool that i really enjoyed was comfortable around and we did it and i was like oh that was fun and i'm glad i did it with someone i trusted but i didn't necess- i wasn't madly in love with this person but i trusted them we in, she was a virgin as well so it ended up working out very well for me um but i look back on that and i think that was the right time for me if it had happened a little earlier with some of my other partners maybe that could have been okay as well um but definitely i i don't recommend doing it for the first time with a stranger i think right. that's just a terrible idea I would agree. the um, craziest thing about virginity is it it's only once and then then you're not a virgin anymore like literally one time having sex and that all the the, this entire question is moot right and like that's the craziest thing is it's like like nick was saying it's like if it's a big deal to you that's that's a beautiful thing let it be a big deal like that's totally okay but also it's just crazy that once you do it once (laughs) this is never going to be an issue again no one's going to judge you for you know not having sex until you were 28 27 whatever it is it's like that'll just be like oh you're just a person and remember also like everyone's partners are different so you might have sex with someone and be like wow that was not very good or maybe that was great i don't know then the next person you meet might like something completely differently so it's always a conversation and a progression in a relationship anyway um so you know i would say like you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself but to me it's similar to like it makes me think of the first time i decided to go up and do stand-up comedy where i'm like there's so much pressure on me because I want it to be great and I want to perf- do awesome. And I went up and I bombed and it was terrible. And then three or four years later, I'm like, it doesn't matter. I learned a lot. Every time I go up, I get something out of it. And it, I think sex can be very similar where you get better at it as you go. But that first time is it's just going to be what it's going to be. So the first time with anybody new is going to be somewhat awkward. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, I think uh, like you guys were saying, there's I think a middle ground in this situation where I agree i don't think trying to find some stranger just to kind of get the deed over with is a good idea but i also don't necessarily think you need to be in a committed relationship to experience it either i think there's something a little less pressure you could find yourself in whether it's a friend or someone that you are into or someone who's into you where you just have a good time and want to experience it together i don't think putting pressure on yourself in either direction is necessary to 
have to be like, oh, I need to be in this relationship and have to explain that I'm a virgin to this person and I, I need them to accept that and blah, blah, blah. Um, I think like you guys were saying, like it could just be someone you feel comfortable with. Say, I, I love Tim's uh, analogy of like, don't be a Colton. I'm talking about it all the time. But also don't be Addison. Addison. Yeah. <laughs> you're right in the middle. middle. You and people with The Bachelor, you're like a cult. You know that? You guys are like addicted. Hey, it's strange. called Bachelor so, Nation. It's Bachelor so Nation, entertaining. It's such shit. I love but you guys watch so it. It makes me feel so good. It's terrible. Well, it's actually funny because I've been watching The Bachelor and The Bachelorette for years, kind of on and off. And there was a, a season that was on a couple years ago, and I invited Meryl and a couple other gals over to watch it. And yeah. Meryl was like, not feeling it, not into oh, it, no. didn't watch any anything else, never came over well, again. And guess what? What happened? Was it paradise? It was paradise. paradise. <laughs> it was That's paradise. what happens, man. It was paradise. It was, um, I can't remember what season we watched. I don't know if it was the shark girl season. Barb, Alexis, or what, like, Alexis Waters, man. Never what uh, episode or what season I yeah, watched with you or try to watch. But uh, yeah, no, my my girlfriend was just watching it and she would go to her like, you know, bachelor parties to go and see it with all her friends. And then one day she just started watching it at home. And it was kind of one of those things where she was she was like, do you mind if I watch this? And I was like, oh, yeah, you know, it's like doing something on my computer. And and it was this past Bachelor in Paradise where like two guys just fought for no reason. Clay. The pinata. Clay, the pinata thing. Yes. <laughs> and I was like working on my computer and I just remember being like. Now, hold on a minute. Like, they're not even fighting over a girl. They're just fighting over a pinata. And she was like, yes. And yeah. I was like, I'm in. I'm hooked. And we watched we watched all of Pilot Pete's season. I'm yeah. in. I don't know Claire, but I'm going to watch her. Claire's like fantastic. You're going to fall in love. I'm in. I'm done. Excellent. Bachelor Nation. So, yeah, just watch The Bachelor and all your problems will be solved. There Honestly. You go. That's how it worked for me. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for your question. Hopefully our advice helped you out. And if you watching right now have a question for us on the show, you can email alwaysopen at roosterteeth.com. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, fellas, Mariel, thank you so much for Barb. joining me today. Thank you. This is thank so you. much fun. Absolutely. Anytime. I hope you guys have I don't been... want it to be three years until the next time we're back. It won't be. <laughs> don't worry. We'll, we'll, make a, we'll make note of it. Don't worry. Good. But uh, we still got a post show to do. So if you're a first member, feel free to tune into that after watching this for more of these guys, more Merle, more me, the whole crew. We love you. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time. Stay home. <laughs> yeah, stay home. Work, work, work on this. <laughs> <laughs>